So you're planning on buying a home right here in Northern Virginia, and regardless if you're a first time home buyer or you've bought many of homes in the past, you must have a million questions going through your head right now. Well, guess what? In this week's video, I'm gonna share with you seven of the most frequently asked questions I get on a day-to-day -day basis from folks just like you who are buying a home. And make sure you watch this video all the way to the end because number seven is hands down the most common question that I get and you're not gonna wanna miss that. And we're getting started right now. Hey everybody, it's David, your favorite realtor. As always, it's another beautiful day right here in Northern Virginia. If it's your first time here on my channel, please smash that subscribe button because every week I release videos on what it's like to live, work, play, pros and cons, top neighborhoods, cost of living, basically everything you need to know about living right here in Northern Virginia. So let's get it started. So the question I get a lot is, hey David, how much do I need for a down payment and closing costs? Great question. So I'm, I'm sure everybody's heard you want to put at least 20% down. That's not necessarily the case because who has 20% down on a million dollar house? That's 200 grand. That's a lot of money. So obviously there's going to be advantages to putting 20% down. Your monthly payment will be a lot lower because your loan amounts can be a lot lower. And then when you put 20% down, that knocks off PMI. And if you don't know what PMI is, that is a private mortgage insurance. And anytime you put less than 20% down, the lender, they'll require you pay PMI. That can be anywhere from two to $350 a month. So that is huge. But I know most people don't have 20% down. So what I tell folks is shoot for at least 5% down. That would get you a great conventional loan. And then you wanna factor in closing costs. Closing costs can be anywhere from two to 3% of the sales price. So two and a half percent, we'll use that for this equation. So you wanna at least have at least seven and a half percent saved up for your money out of pocket to buy your home. So if you can buy a $500,000 home, 7.5% of that is going to be $37,500. So you want at least that saved up in the bank. Now there's a lot of different programs out there. If you're a veteran, which I love veterans, by the way, you can do a VA loan, which is 0% down. However, you still have to have your closing costs in, in that equation. Or there's also an FHA loan where your down payment is only 3.5%. So a lot of different programs out there. But rule of thumb is, expect to spend at least seven and a half percent of the sales price that you're targeting. Now, the next question I get a lot is, hey, David, what do closing costs cover? Great question. So like I said earlier in the video, closing costs can be anywhere from two to 3% of the sales price. And they're gonna cover things like taxes, uh, two sets of taxes, actually. You have a uh, prorated property taxes and a lot of transfer taxes. That's a big chunk of the money right there. You have like lender fees, you have your lenders title insurance and then your own personal title insurance settlement fees you may have an appraisal fee a pest inspection fee you may have to pay a certain amount of months up front of your hoa or condo dues so a lot of these little things that just add up to about two to three percent of the sales price another question i get a lot is hey david do you think the seller will take x amount another great question and i don't i can't really say yes or no they will take that number all I can do is look at all the facts, the data, and kind of give you an educated guess. So for example, if a home has 10 offers on it and you want to offer $20,000 less than list price, high probability you're not going to win that house. Actually, it's a 100% chance you will not get that house. Now, if the house has been sitting on the market for four months and you want to offer $10,000 below list price, hey, there's a very good chance you may get that house. Because I got to imagine you got a motivated seller, they sit on the market a long time, so they're definitely more willing to negotiate. But again, I don't, I don't know the seller, don't work for the seller. And to be honest with you, sometimes sellers don't even know what they'll take. And you know how to find out exactly if a seller will take what you wanna offer. What you wanna do is put the offer in writing so that way it's real. And that's when the seller has to make a decision because they have a real offer in writing with real money on the table. And hands down, this is the best way to find out if a seller will take X amount. Next question I get a lot is, Hey David, when is the best time of year to buy a house? And I usually tell them, you know what? They're, I'm not gonna say January is better than August or, or vice versa. Don't worry about the time of year. That is irrelevant. You need to focus on what's a good time for you. And basically you have two things. Do you have a motivation and need to buy? And do you have, are you financially able to buy? When those two factors combine, that's what is perfect for you to buy. Because if you have a strong motivation to buy, super big need to buy and it's and it's march but you but you have no finances it doesn't matter what time of year it is and vice versa so like i said when you have that strong motivation and you're financially able to 
that is the best time to buy a home. Now, the next question I get quite often is, hey, David, what is an advantage of using a local lender versus using one of those big banks? Now, a lot of advantages over using a local lender, and I'll just name a few, but one is gonna be communication. The big banks of the world, they're not really known for top-notch communication. You may call them and get no, no response, or they don't work weekends, that's a bummer. Local lenders that I work with here in Northern Virginia work seven days a week. I know their cell phone number, I know where they live, so you're gonna have top-notch communication. Another advantage is you can have very competitive rates. I'll say nine times out of 10, a local lender, especially a great one, can beat the rates of the big banks. And at the end of the day, that's what it really matters, right? Saving the dollars and cents. And another advantage of having a strong local lender is when you're competing with, with other offers, having you wanna have all your ducks in a row to help you win in that multiple offer scenario. And having a strong local lender the, selling, the listing agent on the other end, they're gonna know the chances of that loan closing and it being a lot easier. It's gonna be a much higher probability with the local lender compared to the big banks. Next question I get a lot is, and this is a good one is, hey David, is it cheaper to buy a new construction home versus a resale? And this is why I know for a fact because I'm currently buying a new construction home is, it is absolutely not cheaper to buy a new construction home. I compare it to like buying a new car versus a used car. You're always gonna pay premium for a brand new car compared to a used car. Same as new construction homes versus resales. A lot of advantages with buying new construction. Obviously everything's brand new. You're not gonna have to worry about the HVAC breaking down or having to replace the roof in six months. It's always a nice newer neighborhood. You get to pick out all your options. And another huge advantage with new construction is you're not gonna be competing with other buyers for the same property. So yes, you're always gonna pay more for new construction property. I would say it's about a 10 to 15% pre premium compared to a resale. Now, hands down, the most frequently asked question I get on a day-to-day -day basis is, David, is the real estate market gonna crash in Northern Virginia? Long answer, no. So right now, yes, prices are going crazy. Selling, homes are selling for 30, 40, $50,000 over list price. What we have right now is a supply and demand issue. We have very little supply of homes, but a huge demand. And for, for us to get a crash, something crazy has to happen that, that is unforeseen, that we, there, there's just no data pointing towards a market crash. Now, will we have a slowdown where maybe homes sell for maybe 10,000 over list price compared to 50? 100% I can see that. Not to mention our inventory could literally 10X and that would almost just level out the market. And we're nowhere near having 10 times as much inventory as we do right now. So let's let's put this into perspective. If you're gonna buy a home, you gotta have the long-term vision ahead of you. If you wanna buy a home now and sell next year, you're probably gonna lose, you know, between having to pay fees to sell the house and maybe not much appreciation one year. If that's what you wanna do, I don't recommend that. But if you're gonna buy a home for like five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 years, you're 100% will win because let's say that the prices did go down next year, which I don't think, they're gonna bounce back up, always happens. So have the long-term vision and you will win 100% of the time. So if there's any other questions that you had that I did not answer in this video, leave it down in the comments and I'll be sure to answer it. May even do a full video on it. And if you wanna learn more about living in Northern Virginia, check out these videos right here. They'll be awesome resources and I'll see you on the next video.